Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we've got something fun to do. As if I didn't already have enough things to do, well, we're gonna try something new. We've got our old Ferguson TEA down from the barn and uh, we're gonna get it ready. We're gonna enter a vintage tractor pull. Uh, something I've always wondered about, but never really kind of got around to doing. Always too busy with racing and whatnot. But, but now I got some time, so we're gonna give it a try. I decided I mulled it over. I could have took the old uh, Oliver 550 diesel out there. It would go in probably two classes up from what this guy is going to go into. I said, you know what? Let's start small with something I'm very familiar with, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. So this is going to go in the 2,700-pound class. So that is tractor and driver must be below 2,700 pounds. So um, we should just squeak in here with this with this Ferguson they're uh, in between 24 and 25. I'm 170. Um, I'm not sure if that that um, posted weight that I found for it is wet or dry or battery or or what. I have no idea. There's no calcium in the tires. It's just a straight, uh, straight stock tractor. So we're going to start getting this thing ready. Um, first thing we need to deal with is the drawbar. So this back here is where the where the transfer sled gets gets attached to, and like uh, there's not too many rules in this, but there are a few, and there are rules regarding the drawbar. So it must be minimum thirty inches from the. Let me get my tape measure right here. It must be thirty inches minimum from the center of the axle, which is you know about there, right. So we have to have that, that figured out. And it's got to be maximum to the top of it, 18 inches off the ground. That's what we have to work with. So we've got some stuff here. And uh, we're going to see what we can do about getting this set up. Also, we need to um, immobilize it. Because right now, this thing flops around too much. Uh, some competitors will like to use uh, this, the 11-hole drawbar. And we could use that if we wanted to, but it gets, by the time I get my hook and everything onto it, it starts to get a little further away from the tractor. You want to, the closer you can get it to the tractor, the better it's going to, the better it's going to help um, transfer the weight from the front of it to the back, right? Um, so we're going to use this because we can get it just, just a tiny bit closer than we can using this. I'm going to leave this on here um, for now. But um, we'll, you know, we'll see where that all goes. But first thing I got to do is up in the front of this thing here, um, in that anchor there, you can see it goes up and down. So what we have to do is we got to get some kind of a washer or a spacer or something to go on top of the drawbar tongue to keep it from going up like that. Because you don't want that, see? I got my drawbar set to the height I want, exactly 18 inches, and as soon as I start to pull, it's going to go like that, right? And I'm going to lose almost an inch of height. Well, you don't want that. There's the first step. The drawbar is completely immobilized. Good. So it can't move any which way. Um, now what I probably should do is take this PTO adapter off and put the cap back on. So here you can see. We got our 30 inches out from the center of the axle. And, very important, there's our 18 inches to the top of the hook. Now, um, this is great. I, I still have to uh, bolt the, I gotta drill a hole or come up with something to keep it from turning. The three quarter bolt is what's gonna hold it on, but we need another bolt just to keep, uh, to stabilize it. Um, this here, you can find these in the junkyard. These are off of early 2000s F-150. Um, real handy if you're going to go tractor pulling. These are great. You just take them off and they're ready to go. Here's the last thing we're going to talk about um, on the hitch anyway. I was a little bit worried about because this drawbar sticks out so far. And the chain, the chain on the sled it goes down to the bottom of the sled, right? So you're kind of pulling up on it while you're while you're pulling it. That that gives the tractors a chance to because the chain goes down, 
when they first give that first lurch, it kind of lifts the sled up a bit, takes the weight off of it, and lets the tractor get rolling. The problem, I, I was worried that that, might, that that might bend this, or even if it didn't bend it, there's enough spring in it that it would it would pull my it would pull my draw bar down and and take away some of that mechanical advantage I had there, right? So all I did was I just I went up to the lawnmower bracket on this thing and I and I used a chain and a turnbuckle to tighten it up. That's good and solid now. That's not got any give in it. And I double checked my height where allowed. Remember, um, 18 inches to the top of this. And right now we've got 17 and 7 eighths. So I will fine tune that. I'm going to pull up on that turnbuckle a bit till we've got exactly 18 inches to the top of this. Every little bit helps. There we are. And that is going to change. I mean, depending on your air pressure and your tires, you start airing the tires down, the tractor's going to drop down. And we may have to pull that, pull that thing up um, a little higher, right? Uh, only time will tell. That's the next step we're going to do, I guess, um, is the tires. So, um, for most of the time of my old tractors, I keep the tires pumped up pretty hard, uh, which limits the amount that they flex because mostly I just use them as toys driving around the farm and whatnot. But to really get them to bite in, you, you need to air them down so that you've got enough, uh, as much length flat as possible to the, so the the biggest uh, contact patch you can get so what we're going to do the the ferguson operator's manual says to run these things at 12 psi so that's what we're going to do for now we're going to let them down to 12 psi so what do you know live and learn both back tires on this thing were just about flat <laughs> oh well my bad so i blew them up to 12 pounds and now, what do you know? Look at that. Our draw bar is at 19 inches. So, well, that's not good. So what we're going to do is take it back apart. We've got a lot of adjustability in our setup here. So all we're going to do is take the hook off the top of the draw bar and move it to the bottom. And that should get us right back to 18 inches. That's better. And I had to lift it up probably at least half an inch, maybe three quarters with with. Uh, preload on the chain so that's good so that means um if we decide to lower the air pressure down a little bit the tractor's gonna gonna settle down and we can loosen that off and lower our draw bar down without really having to change anything um that's awesome that's the stock car racer in me everything adjustable everything must be adjustable the more things you can adjust the better off you're gonna be um Another thing that you could possibly do would be to um, put the wheels on the inside of the discs if we have enough room. It would be really dicey with clearance of the fenders because the um, for pulling, the narrower you can get the back of it, the, the better off it's going to be because if one tire uh, digs more than the other, it's gonna its influence is gonna be to steer the tractor, right? So the closer to center you get the wheels, the less that influence is when it happens. But um I know on a nine end with the with the like the 32 inch wheels, the the eight the eight by thirty-two wheels, you can put the, the wheels behind the discs and you've you've got enough room. Um I, I just don't think that'll that'll work out on this Ferguson. Sorry, the light's shining in there. Um, it's not something I want to, want to tear into at this point. The other thing we're going to do is the front tires. We're going to make sure they're blown up hard, hard, hard. The, the least amount of contact with the ground you can have with the front tires, the better off because it's friction, it's drag. You want all the power, everything she's making to drive these back wheels to turn the sled or, or to pull the sled. You, you don't want the tractor having to fight anything else. So we're going to get these front wheels aired up and then we're going to make sure that the toe is set good too so that it's not, you know, if it's towed out or towed in, it's going to be kind of pushing the front wheels through the dirt rather than rolling them. I found the front tires had about 20 in them. I blew them up to 30. That lifted up the front end, which basically used the, the rear axle became the fulcrum of our pivot 
and lowered the back. So look at that. Now our draw bar is a quarter of an inch lower. So we're going to adjust it again. Now we're going to check out the front end. Um, what I've done here is I've rolled it up onto my, my homemade turn plates. It's just a couple of pieces of plastic on top of each other. It eliminates the friction between the rubber and the concrete because you just cannot do this with the tire sitting on the concrete. This lets them move a little bit. So we've got, you can also use two pieces of tin, a couple of peel and stick tiles, a couple of hunks of laminate flooring. Uh, you could put a drop of oil in between them. That helps also. So anyway, we're ready to do that. So what you're going to do, once you got it on them, we're just going to um, jiggle the steering back and forth a little bit to get everything settled down. And then we're going to use our, um, these are our tow plates from our old racing days. But you can just as easily put um, two bricks and a hunk of angle iron against the tire on either side. Any of these methods would work. So what we're looking for here, um, if your steering box is, is relatively tight, you want the thing towed in about a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, this one does have a decent steering box on it. The Ferguson, the Ferguson steering box is, is, is a, it's a great box. Um, and this one you can see here, we've got on the back of the wheel, we've got basically exactly 60 inches. And on the front, we've got, um, 60 and an eighth. So this thing is actually towed out an eighth of an inch. That is not what we want. So we're going to work on these, um, drag links and get this thing towed in a sixteenth. So let's see what we got now. Uh, okay, exactly 61. And back here we've got 61 and a 16th. Now we're not out of the woods yet. What I always do is I swap the two tape measures and make sure I get the same answer. Yeah, that worked out. So we can go ahead now and uh, tighten up the, the lock sleeves uh, or the clamps, the lock clamps on our drag links. And now we're going to have a look at the engine. Now we're going to check out the engine. The first thing we want to do is lash our valves just to be sure they're exactly what they need to be at. Um, valves that are loose give you a safety factor, but they, they can hurt performance. Like not drastically, we're talking in incremental, you know, but over the core, over the entirety of a machine, if you add up all the incrementals, that's how you start making um, tangible gains, right? That's what racing is all about. And this is no different than racing, right? So what we want to do is make sure that the valve clearances are right on, on, right on the money. 10 intake, 12 exhaust, cold. We may even, you know, if, if we were feeling uh, brave, tighten that up even a little bit more because as the valve clearance tightens, you gain lift and you gain duration. That's performance, right? At the same time, if they're too tight, when the valves heat up, they stop closing, and um, you know you end up with burned valves, or, or at least reduced performance. So you have to be careful with it. So we're just gonna go through and make sure they're exactly 10 and 12. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, this here is number one, right? So we're gonna pull the distributor cap off, roll the engine around, um, till it's pointing at number one and we can adjust these two here So let's see how these ones are this one here. The very front one is an exhaust. It needs to be 12 Yeah, it's a little loose the intake 10 It's not bad, but we we could tighten it up a bit too Okie doke so, where'd my screwdriver go? Can't do this, oh, it's right here. So we're gonna crack the lock nut. Man, they're pretty tight. There we go. And then we're gonna adjust this thing until, it, until it's kinda tight on there. Because once we tighten the jam nut, it'll tend to loosen it off some. There we go. Let's see what we get. I'm on the wrong side. I'm turning it the wrong way.
let's see what do we got yeah that's got a bit of drag on it that's exactly how we want it now we'll do this intake valve and try and get the same feel on it it's actually pretty good Yep. Let's see here. <clears throat> yeah, that's nice. So that's perfectly set valves on number one cylinder. Now we'll just go through the firing order. We'll be doing three, then four, then two. One, three, four, two. Yeah. All right. I'll see you when I'm done. Once the valves are lashed to our satisfaction, we can uh, close the top of the engine back up and now we're going to pull the four spark plugs out, uh, make sure they look okay, check the gaps, and we should be good to go under the hood. Here's another thing you can think about is this here fan. Um, look at the size. It's got like a 7 8 belt on it and this big old four blade fan. Um, you could work with that, you know. It depends how um, stock you're worried about keeping it, right? You could modify and swap out all these pulleys to, you know, like a 3 8 or 7 16 automotive type belt. You could um, take two blades off of this fan or just take the darn fan off completely, right? All of this is stuff that is a parasitic drag on the engine. So what we're doing for now is... Um, we're just leaving it all as it is. We're not getting too carried away. And the fan belt is kind of on the loose side. It's, you know, it's good enough that it works. It turns the fan, it turns the generator, but it's, it's kind of sloppy. So it's not making a lot of friction here between the belt and the pulleys, you know, and it's not making extra friction on the water pump bearing or the generator bearing. And um, that's how we're going to leave it. Let's have a look at these plugs now. The plug gap on these things is listed in the manuals 25 thousandths, but uh, we're going to take a little liberty with that and we're going to set them at 35. That'll ensure we get a good hot spark. The breaker points on this should be set to 15 thousandths and I, uh, I just checked them. They're right spot on, so that's good. So we'll put all this ignition stuff back together, put the fuel tank back on and fire it up. Here's the last thing we're going to do. We're going to run all the old gas out of this thing. It's not, you know, it's not like it's stinky or nothing, but it's, you know, it, it, it's, it sits around a lot. So we're going to get this stuff out of here and uh, get some fresh stuff in it. Well, she's pretty much finished draining. So we're going to um, put the line back on. I'm going to pull the sediment bowl down, clean any crap out of it, clean the screen, Put it all back together and we'll put some fresh gas in it and we should be good to go. All right, we got some fresh fuel in it. Let's open her up. All cleaned up and full of fresh gas. Make sure we've got no leaks. We're all good. Uh, and as far as fuel goes for this, regular pump gas is really all you need. Um, Race fuel, as exotic as it sounds, will accomplish nothing in these things unless you've got the compression to take advantage of the added octane that race fuel comes with. There is no more energy or power in race fuel than there is in regular pump gas. In fact, sometimes there is less. Uh, these things are about six and a half to one compression. Um, 87 octane pump gas is just fine. In fact, um, you know pretty much anything so let's lay that to rest you'll hear a lot of stories i mean you can make more power by what you feed the engine but it needs to be something that that comes with its own oxygen right like nitrous oxide or some other kind of exotic stuff that you can mix in with the gas um we're not getting involved with that regular old pump gas is good enough for this all right, let's take this thing for a spin and see how she's running. This thing always ran good. 
really good. Let's see how she does the hill test out the back. That's what you like to see. Sorry, it's a little bouncy. So here's a test. We'll see if she'll put up this hill at low speed in third gear. This is how I test them. This is the my Claremont backyard dyno, this hill. Not bad. It's getting steeper. Come on. Come on, baby. You're nearly up. It's slowing it right down. Look, the generator light's flashing. It's starting to uh, foul the plugs a little bit. But there you go. She cleaned herself out. She made it up idling in third gear. That's awesome. That's pretty good. We got her all sorted out. It's running great. Um, it's ready to go. Let's see if this thing will pull the sled, you know? Um, and, and it comes down to me too. I gotta I gotta do it right, you know, or the or the thing. The thing ain't going to move. I, I'm pretty sure I got an idea what you got to do to get the thing moving. So uh, we'll find out uh, when we get there. Anyway, in the next video, it'll be uh, it'll be pull day and we'll have everything rigged up and we'll be over there at the fair and we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for tuning into the Claremont Classic Garage. I hope you will come back and see us again. And until then, I'm Kevin saying so long for now.